we're back in the pilot's lounge to talk about a number of hazards associated with flying helicopters that the airplane pilot never experiences. Among the emergencies unique to rotorcraft are anti-torque system failure, settling with power, ground resonance, and situations requiring auto rotation. Let's look at these in more detail. The failure of the anti-torque system will result in a loss of heading control and is a serious matter which must be handled as an emergency. Some indications of anti-torque system failure include unusual medium frequency vibrations or sounds, a pitching motion of the nose, or while at low speeds, a sudden hard yaw to the right. Some helicopters have a chip warning light that alerts the pilot of an imminent failure. An anti-torque system could fail due to a loss of a tail rotor component, failure of the tail rotor drive, or a failure in the mechanical linkage between the pedals and the tail rotor. If the anti-torque system fails while at a hover, you must react quickly. The torque reaction produced by the relatively high power setting will create a turning motion to the right that builds up rapidly. Close the throttle immediately without varying the collective pitch position to eliminate this turning effect. If the helicopter is allowed to spin much past 90 degrees, the torque effect will become so great that you'll lose control of the aircraft. From this point, follow the procedure for a hovering auto rotation. Use the cyclic to stop any sideward or rearward movement and place the helicopter in a level landing attitude prior to touchdown. Raise the collective to cushion the landing all the while continuing to roll the throttle off into the override position. You don't want the engine to kick back in and start turning the helicopter again. The FAA recommends entering auto rotation if an anti-torque failure occurs during forward cruising flight. Keep cyclic control movements to a minimum until all pitching subsides. If sufficient forward speed is maintained, the fuselage remains fairly well streamlined. However, if you attempt a descent at slow speeds, you should expect a continuous turning movement to the left. Maintain directional control primarily with cyclic control and if necessary by gently applying throttle momentarily with the needles joined to swing the nose to the right or decrease the throttle to swing the nose to the left. The best and safest landing technique, terrain permitting, is to land directly into the wind with approximately 20 miles per hour airspeed. The helicopter will turn to the left during the flare and during the subsequent vertical descent. Remember to keep the helicopter as level as possible at ground contact. 